Hello listeners and welcome to the Intaku Not Podcast, Shock, Horror, Sirens in the Distance. As today we are doing something slightly different today where Hugh and I are going to be offering our opinions on a particular film, a very bad film from last Not year. Not even an anime film. Not even an anime film from last year called Slaughterhouse Rules. We'll explain more why as to why we're going to be doing it in a minute, but ideally you'll be watching this alongside us as I'm afraid we can't upload an entire film, crap though it is. On YouTube with our commentary on it. Then again, with the amount of views we get, it probably wouldn't get taken. No, it would not get flagged instantly. No, no, one viewer if, if, would if, be if able any, to enjoy this if any, if anything, the director would probably thank us for putting his film out there. Yes, Crispin would absolutely love us. Like, Crispin and I are tight. But anyway, so uh, the, the film is Slaughterhouse Rules. And so if you can get a copy of it open at your discretion, it would be good if you could watch along with us. We are currently at Quad Zeros, and if you would like to lead us in, Hugh, on go, we will press play, and you should do so at the same time at home. We're going to begin in three... Two, one, and play. There we go. There we are. So, Slaughterhouse Rules, not an anime film. No. Why the fuck are we talking about why, it today? Why, why are we indeed? Why did we care enough to buy the Blu-ray of this aberration? Uh, well, I think I'm the only person that owns this Blu-ray, and that includes the director and his mum, to be mm. fair. Like, the reason why we're talking about this film is both of us are actually teachers, are yes. we not? And early last year, we saw an advert for a film called Slaughterhouse Rules that looked, as we thought, like the sort of film we both like. It had teacher humour, it had adverts of horror and comedy, and we were sat there going, my word, stolen picture. It's a stolen childhood. It's a stolen childhood, yeah. Critically, uh, it is very much a fight the power kind of system. Uh, It's a fight the sort of, like, you know, middle class, boarding school-esque experience, basically. Uh, as you can see here, there is the introduction video, which was quite nice. That, that lion's had way too much to drink. Oh, I definitely. So I've seen about three different schools like this. Now, we, oh, I have as well. Yeah, like, I've seen so say, many yeah. like this. So Hugh and I went to this with some expectation. Now, I rather unfortunately saw the reviews of this before we went to go and see the cinema, and it received the most distinctive four to six out of tens I had ever seen. Oh, you see, I didn't even see the sixes. I just saw the fours. Like, I just saw this to be a film where most of the jokes missed the mark. So this is very mediocre. Now, he- here is already come up, coming up, actually, is our early bit of expositional dialogue here, which is very lazy, where I believe they talk about Dad. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you need say, to shut yes. them down. Dad, let's go at 16, Mum. Most people do. Like, I don't know why... I, I don't know why that is still... Like, one of those things, like, Dad left school at 16, why not? It's just, like, most people left school at 16. That's That was the done thing. That, that was the done thing, yes. But, um, yes, so basically, there's the special dialogue of rather than watching and seeing... Oh, God, thanks, Mikey, dude. Rather Does he wa- ever turn up again? No, no, he doesn't. No. Rather than watching and seeing our character being, air quotes, depressed, which would have been nice, instead we are being told. So the whole principle behind this film is just that, you know, kid from up north... No, that, that is his own. That is his only defining character. Characteristic. That his only defining characteristic is that he is from the north, um, and then he goes south. Uh, oh, there's actually a bit yeah, of the, foreshadowing. Yeah, that was a, a character. Like, a shame we didn't actually get a good look at his face. We've never actually seen the film before, but yes, they get to play golf on the lawn. They've but got, yes. you know, they've got women. But this film goes wrong. Oh god, and there she is. Goes wrong in a great. Great many ways. Oh, it really okay. does. Like Enormously I think so. we've had conversations about this. Like I think we've spoken more about this film than the director slash writers did while writing this film. Simply in breaking down how much we dislike this film. But the thing is, I don't think we dislike the film. I think it's more on the lines of we're disappointed. Well, well I despise it because I'm disappointed in it. But that's just me because I had high hopes for this thing. Yeah. Um. Oh, yep. Yeah, no, here's Dad. Here's the expositional dialogue. There we go. Um, so, a few trivial facts about this. I've got a question. Oh, go on. How does a woman and a vase have a child? Um, through a bed sheet. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, through source of mortality. Now, here's our first bit of foreshadowing of the film that goes absolutely nowhere. This film is an expert craft in setting... I'm, I am convinced that there were three different writers on this, because... We already begin with some of that sort of foreshadowing, building up things. Well, it's like it from from slaughter topic. to immortality, so it kind of makes things like you got a whole wizard. The, the whole like, the whole idea is it thinks wizards. The idea that um, the things that are coming from actually from hell and stuff like that. So you get the feeling that there's going to be magic. There's going to be weirdness. None of that happens. Uh, this film had a five million dollar budget. I reckon about four million went on to licensing this song. 
I wouldn't be surprised if four million went went to just getting the like estate. Yeah. Oh well. Yes. Yeah. So, so they recorded at their old secondary school. Is the thing. Actually. Oh, is this actually this, this is their old secondary school? Oh, I didn't know that. Um, do you want to so... do you want to give a bit of insight as to why you know a lot of these back background facts? Yes. So a IMDb, which is always helpful, but predominantly. I have met the director of this film, Crispin. Uh, he's a lovely guy, uh, and I also met the two main, uh, the, well, the two main leads, the actor and the actress. Okay, this is both of their first films, I believe, apart from like an advert for Frosties or some other bollocks. Um, <laughs> but this is Crispin's second film, and I met him at MCM Comic Con. Now here, actually, here's Butter, here's Butterworth, our actually decent actor. Yeah, in this. he's a good he's guy. He's been in many things. He's got a decent range in this as well, and he's, he's like pretty much the best character. Fucking shame nothing happens with it. No, absolutely. Um, but basically, uh, oh, good lord, I can't be doing with this. But, um, there we go. Uh, that, that this is, this again, is, I would like to, foreshadowing I, gets a gun. Yeah, All but right. I'd also like to point out, he is described as being the character that will just, okay, good joke. Yes, I will no admit joke. that's an alright joke. No, that, that's the alright joke. The fact that one that of them... That is the funny joke. Yeah, one of them gets Tinder and then the other one also gets out Tinder. I like the fact that that kid, he is the kid that you can give contraband to when he hides it. However, that doesn't really come up again. No, it would be nice. And if there's it did. the title screen. There's the title screen. And now, of course, this is a Simon, Simon Pegg, Pegg film, and we didn't get to meet Simon Pegg or Nick Frost because apparently they were busy doing something. I can't remember what. Being better than this. I don't, be I, I don't, I, I don't want to have this. a go at them for that because they're, they're no. fine, right? No, they are. Um, so, basically, I met the main director at Comic Con because these unfortunate bastards. Had to go on at, uh, right before. Do you know who they came on before? Oh right, it was Comic Con twenty. It was last year. Was so, it eighteen? So, yeah. I'm gonna guess someone like the Red Dwarf people. No, Critical Role. Oh, and Critical Role have a surprisingly large fan base. Yeah, you can say so. Yeah, you can say surprising. So the the entire room was packed, literally front to back. And everyone, people. and if I remember correctly, you said everyone was there for Critical Role. Everyone was there for Critical Role for the past two like. Literally for the past two points. Mm. Um, oh, here's the bit about talking about the boy who's no longer with us. Again, you'd like to think they'd do something with it. I thought I told you to clear out Seymour's stuff. We never meet Seymour. We never really hear about Seymour. The only thing no, we, we find... hear about Seymour. We only, the only thing we really hear about Seymour later on is we that Seymour... We eventual fate. Yeah, Seymour kills himself and the the guy was in love with him. And yes, and he's gay. And that is it. Now, we'll talk more about how disappointing that is later on. Um, Not the fact that he's gay, the fact they don't do anything with it. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, uh, I'm like, like, that you like, like, like I'm actually pretty happy with how they like pull him out to be gay. They just kind of go, oh, by the way, he's gay. Yes, well, I would have been happy with it for, for the fact that this is a movie about wizards and fucking moles and shit. Except <laughs> it's not. No, it's not. Well, it yes. Never has been. And it never worst, has been. Never would have. Been. Never will be. That's the worst part about this film. No, absolutely. But um, basically, they were perfectly nice people because, of course, they were just you know they were perfectly nice. Yeah. Um, I got the main director to sing for a bit, and I had since discovered that he is actually a guitarist by trade, and this is his second film. Uh, <laughs> he, he shot Budget Han Solo. He did shoot Budget Han Solo. <laughs> Harrison now, cannot afford. Now, now um, where, where... All right, sorry, That continue. was a good joke. That no, was, no, no, Harrison cannot no, afford. That was a fucking... That, that is a good mind. joke. Now, um, now, sorry, continue. Do continue. Yes. Oh, God's sake. But, um, but yeah. Wooten, double but, yeah, O. So, me and them are absolutely lovely, but I heard all, like, all sorts of trivia. They seem nice. At the same time, there is a distinct air that we're keeping positive, and that's all we can realistically do here. Hmm. So, we now get into our first bit of boarding school humor, and this is where the film, in my opinion, falls apart, actually. You can start to see it happen here. Where thus far we've gone for I wouldn't want to say a serious tone, but we've definitely gone for a bit of a it's sort kind of, like of it's kind of drama. It's tone. gone for a dramatical tone that with the occasional little bit of humour with our opening montage of the kids, you know, yeah. bringing in contraband, not wanting to go to school, doing the whole that sort of thing. But most of it now is just kind of his our main character. He doesn't want to go to school, but he kind of gets convinced because he realizes you know do it for his dad. Here's our the, other character here is who shot, he falls in love with. Here is shot of only woman. If if no if this was a Korean film, then they would have. Uh... Oh, naked lady. Uh, if this was a Korean film, they'd now be in love. They would have won the no, no, If it was a Korean joke, they would have looked at each other and then in love. And then fall in, in love, love instantly. Like, yeah, yes. there you go. Oh no, he's standing in Andromeda. Yes, now, he's, yeah. now, here's the thing like, is there something a little bit weird about calling your girl's house Andromeda? Like, considering... It's very far away and running towards you at great speed. I mean, I was more on the idea of like. Right, this! This is where the film loses me. Because this is not like taking the piss this is just 
here's boarding ridiculous. school. Ridiculous. Well, it's like, here's the thing, though. Like, I get what they were trying to do. Each of the different houses has a different, like, idea. So we've got Olympias is the uh, is, is the sporty one. Yeah, yeah. And whatever. you've got you Sparta, got... which is for the nerds. you got your, you got your different... But not, little, like, but not the nerd classes. But the fact that they are presented in that kind of, like, you know... This house, then this house, then this house kind of way. Right, I will say, this guy here, if one for the fact that he literally wants to murder someone for being gay, he would otherwise be a decent villain. He's a good actor. He is, he is, he is one of the better parts of the film, because he is just evil for the sake of being evil, and it's kind of refreshing. Also, can I point out... Drink along with us, by the way, viewers. I'm moving on to number two. Uh, I would like to point out, and can I, can I just say this, like, isn't it a bit weird that all of the girls are in... One house. It's an upper boarding school, and they've just taken every single kid, and they've just gone, here you are, you're in well, the one house. If they'd done something with it, that could have been interesting. But they didn't. Cleggy. Now, 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 if anyone, if the director is listening to this and he's made it this far, I'd like to point out, we're Crispin. not... Crispin! <laughs> Refer to him by his first name. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm friends with him. Sorry, if Crispin's listening to this, because this is probably the only comedy track of this film on the internet, and let's be honest here, for the last six months he has been just scouring the internet to make sure if anyone's speaking about his film. Um, I'd like to point out that we do quite like you, and I can see bits of this film that work. It's just, in general, this is not a, we're making fun of this. This is a... We're going to make jokes about it, but at the end of the day, we want to make this film better. Hi, it's all oh, great. Oh, God, I mean, not this Oh, side yeah, plot. right, yeah. So so, right. so, so here is here is Sam Pathetic, Sean... Here is Margaret I was Robbie. Say, I was about to say Sean Bean. Here is Margaret Robbie, who gets top billing on this film. Uh, yes. Despite being in it for... Less than a minute. <laughs> if that. So, so that's... So that's Draco Malfoy, Here is right? by far the best bit of the entire film, and he's crap in this. Well, the dog. No, Martin Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the dog. The little doggy woggy. The, the doggy woggy that is also a, pl- a plot point. A plot point that. But we'll but, but we'll talk about that yes. later. Anyway, yeah, no, the bat. I do. Kind of funny. I do quite like Martin Sheen in this. I will admit. That's just because you like Martin Sheen. I do just like boys. Welcome. See, there we go. There's and your then the girls. Boys, cough. welcome back. Oh, and girls. There you go, right? There, there, there's a good, there's no, a, there's a good bit of... That's not enough of a setup and payoff, but there was an idea there, there. There is a good bit of jokey, upper-class, British boarding school humour, where the whole idea of just like, oh crap, yeah, women exist. Yes. Because they don't remember that, because let's be honest here, it's, you know, a high, uh, upper-class thing where women just don't get the same treatment. But unfortunately, that straight-up isn't a hot part of this film. Can I point out this camera work is fucking schizophrenic? <laughs> no. Cut. Can I also? Can Wait, I also? Cut. Yeah, cut. Wait. Cut. Cut. <laughs> cut. cut. <laughs> can I also like to point cut. out? Can I cut. like to point out that like cut. the way they're recording this is supposed to be like cut. you're listening to him through the like through, through the, the students. yeah through the students. But the problem is, as a result, he sounds different to literally every other recorded person. And it just doesn't sound right. No, none of it sounds right. It even smells of you. What do you think Simon Pegg smells like? Like a sad dog? What, in this film? Yeah, like, no, 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 just generally. A sad small dog is constantly terrifying. Oh, yeah, here's... Oh, yeah, oh his... God, no. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Oh, here they come. Oh, yeah. You know, the security in this school is apparently ridiculously low considering that later on we find out that they are quite literally packing. I also do love how literally Martin Sheen goes shifty eyed. Yeah. Wake up, your house is on fire. I didn't realise this is Notre Dame. No oh, oh that's <laughs> topical. Um, <laughs> I do apologize to the, the to the city of France. Yep, you'll also be pleased And to the be... country of Paris. Doesn't he flip a guy here? I hope he does. No, he doesn't get flinched. Nah. No. See, I, I, I remember why I thought that. Because in the cinema, I was thinking, would it have been cool if they had a bit of a, like, you know, proper kick down, at, like, five second, like, oh, get your attention, five second action, because by this point, I'd already lost interest. Well, I mean, when we went to this film, we went and saw this film in Stoke, didn't we? Yes. And I think the film had been out a week or two at the point. And so we went, oh, okay, <laughs> well, it's it's got, Mar- it's got Martin Sheen, it's got 
Simon Pegg, it's got Nick Frost, who turns up later on, which means that, you know, British people will probably want to go and see this movie. So we looked for some of the showings in Stoke on Trent, and we discovered that there was There weren't one. any. There, was there weren't any. We had to go to the next town over. We did have to go to the next town over where there was one showing, and while in the cinema, we were one of four people there. And I'm sorry for the two people that were in there with us, because I don't think they enjoyed the film. No, because we were giggling to ourselves. And we were giggling to ourselves, know. because, ah, uh, here we go. There right, so, the fracking thing is a theme in this film, um, which apparently Chris Spin's got a bee in his bonnet about fracking. Yeah, he apparently so hates like, fracking. He, he, apparently, he apparently hates fracking, he hates the British upper class education system. And decided to smash the two themes together. Yeah, and it just... Now, keep... Yeah. This is where we get. Now, this is where we get into the interesting part of this film, which is the fact. Well, I say interesting. The bit where it all kind of goes. I do like it. the fact that he comes back and covered in yeah, blood. I think it's, it's it's very subtle. And in the words of Caligula, that's nice. And the the, the 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 you know Roman dictator slash emperor who was known for the, being the mental rapist mental, one. Yeah, it's yeah. the mental rapist one. Yes. Um. So this film alludes to having stuff about wizards, basically, and the fact there's a hole opening beneath the earth caused by fracking. Except it doesn't, it's just fracking in their moles. I'm sorry I spoiled <laughs> is, that. I'm is, sorry yeah, I spoiled that just, for you it's, viewers. It's giant, but, angry, um, carboniv carnivorous the, the bit, moles. The two things which I think anger the most about this film is the tone shifts. Um, we're about to get our first one of that, I think, because of it, the necktie thing. It can't figure out whether or not it wants to be a drama, a comedy, an action film, or a horror. Yes, and it really and struggles. And so it just kind of, of mixes all of them together into some kind of weird pot. Uh, I like how these two are the only teachers in the entire film. It must be well, They are, aren't yes, they? They, are, yes. they literally are the only teachers. And what does he teach? He teaches... Now, now he doesn't teach Latin. That's what we know about him. We'll find out because of that point, this bit of foreshadowing. The second bit which I'm really annoyed about this film is the fact that there is so much foreshadowing that goes nowhere. Well, it's because I get the feeling what happened was he went and started writing this script. And, uh, and he had a, and he well, had it. Yeah, our boy while he's having an orgy, probably uh, on, on on cocaine eating. You know, he can't covered, afford. He can't afford cocaine. Eating chocolate covered strawberries. That's the one. That's the one. Yes. He um he comes up with some relatively good ideas. Oh, Mister Chips. Oh, Mister Chips. That's the dog. Yes, no, yes, Mister Chips, which is apparently a reference to something I wasn't alive in when it Miss, happened. Miss, no, Mister Chips is a reference to countdown. Uh, not countdown. Not countdown. Um, is a, catchphrase. Yeah, cat, catchphrase. I, apparently, Mister Chips is also another thing where apparently the dog dies in it or something. I mean, I'm just thinking of catchphrase. Oh, that's all right. I'm just thinking of like Mr. Chips and catchphrases. It's Mr. Chips, everybody, and everyone applauds. Yeah, no one else found that funny. I found it funny. What catchphrase? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I'm no one else. To be fair, you are no one else. Um, so I also... there's the fracking tower. Yeah. Anyway, I can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, yeah, he was he was writing the script, and he had a basic idea of okay, boarding school gets invaded from hell and has to fight its way out. When we have quite a bit of boarding school humor. However, at one point, someone sat down and went, "Well, number one, we haven't got the budget for that." And yeah, number yeah, I think that's the uh, biggest problem. And number two, your house has been knocked down to make way for fracking. At which point, he got very very angry about fracking and rewrote the script. Fight the power. Indeed. I'd like to point out, did you, did you notice that? in the, uh, in the the We're watching with subtitles, by the way. In the subtitles, they misspelled load. Oh, did they? Oh, they, they spelled it L-O-D-E. I, I, I don't know, man. I think that's <laughs> this film's least problems. Oh, seismic disturbance. There's something down there. In them tunnels. Oh, look. It's moving. So... As far as cinematography goes, <laughs> it's boring, but it's fine. Now they say it's a prick. Now it's just some moles pump a will. That's the only correct bit of foreshadowing in this entire fucking. Film. Yeah, because it is in fact moles. Just moles. It is in fact just what 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 type of animal do moles belong to? Call me mental, but doesn't a military helicopter crash later in this film? Yes. Right. But the We've moles. Got that so to I don't know how the moles get to it. Oh, here we go. Here's our. Oh, here's Margaret. Here's Margot Robbie. I'm pretty sure Margot Robbie at some point in the movie reveals that she's actually banging one of her friends. Yes. Margot Robbie is the only non... Wait, is she English? Is she British? No, she's not British. I believe she's Australian. Fair enough. Apart from Wolf of Wall Street and Suicide Squad, what else has Margot Robbie actually been in? Um, most people's wank fantasies. <laughs> and that's why she gets money. I do wish she'd stop calling me most people. <laughs> 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 but she's in this film for what be like two minutes or so. I would even say a minute, honestly. No, right, there's a joke. If I can get a replacement coach for the under 16s, I'll do. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, she's totally not fucking him. No, absolutely. He's way more attractive, and he's oh, doctor, and he's a doctor, Doctor Francois. Man, shame he's not there anymore. He's uh... we're at it all day long, non-stop. It's funny because you could because it's also <laughs> an innuendo. It's like poetry, it rhymes. It's so deeply fulfilling. Deeply fulfilling. It's just. A... I know Ben laughed at that at least. Oh yeah, Ben's not listening first. Rebel fighters. What do you mean, Ben's not listening first? He's a part of the podcast. Everyone knows we listen to everything. Oh, I like that. There's a cricket guy as his background. No, it's him as a background. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's him. I've seen more. I do also. I do also like the fact that he basically throughout the entire movie, every time it's night time, he's just drinking. And then when he, and then every single time he just turns back up, oh lovely, uh, turns back up, he's just drunk slash hungover. I like I do like that as a joke. The idea that you know, th- straight up you can't. Get I think the we're saying too many positive things about this film. If I'm being honest, that's because at the moment it's not terrible. It's just a bit boring. And oh now, shit! Look, it's a foreign person. Yeah, but now what we do? Here's what we're doing now. Is now we're just you know now we're just giving ourselves the one minute. Why is fracking bad? In real life, apart from why is fracking bad because in it releases because it releases the killer moles. Whatever your name is into bed, yes, sir. It's Wallace. Does it look like I care? Throws a cricket bat at his face. What a delivery! Well, I'd like to point out I li- I, I he like, did, but he doesn't even play rugby. No, do you know what the best thing is though? I like the fact that it's pot calling kettle because he's calling him a pons, despite the fact. That oh he... my good lord! Why did you have to say that to the one black character, Hugh? What <laughs> pot there's... calling kettle? Oh, there's two black characters, mate. Yeah, there's a grand total of two by now. Yes, I'm... this film is a bit white. Oh, here we go. Right, there's a third so one. no, oh, fuck it. that's the <laughs> same. It's the same guy. Um, so. Yes, here this is, is our here first is, bit of tone flipping. Here is the so we, subplot. We've established ourselves as a as a big old fucking rompy, dr- like you know, drama thing, and now we've got this whole thing where someone has clearly, very clearly, hanged themselves. Now we've already got a little bit of foreshadowing that that Viscount kid from earlier has something to do with it. They could have and been there's the yeah, fracking of... thing happening, and there's also the whole to the nether realm being. So opened. maybe they're all connected. They're not connected. Wouldn't that be getting no, a hang on? No, no, they they might be connected yet. We we might be watching Schrodinger's film, and it suddenly got good. No, that's true. I like the fact that he insults people from Sparta, yet he himself is in Sparta. Well, yeah. As I say, he's an okay mid- middle villain. He's fine. He he gets much better during the end of the film where he literally turns murderous for no reason. Yeah, where he turns reason. mental for no reason. He should have been mental at the beginning of the Oh, well, to honest. be fair, he has beaten up a protester and walked back in blood. Well, no, that's, no, I mean, you should have gone all Schindler's List and just, like, gone from his room, seeing him waking up and then just sniping year sevens. <laughs> If anyone deserves it. Taking them out as they're grabbing fucking stuff from Reaper Graphics for various history teachers and air quotes. Can you just nip and get that for me? Yeah, absolutely. Bang! <laughs> yeah, because he, he's there. He's, he's obviously got, you know, he's obviously got a tart in his room as well. Oh, no, absolutely. That is exactly what it's happening. That's not to offend the ladies. I do mean a tart. As in, like, a, like a lemon tart. If that's what you want to think, so. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm going to think. Oh, that was funny earlier. I said, th- I said thank you, darling, when I gave Hugh some shoes earlier, and he gave, had a right panic when he thought <laughs> I said it to the lovely lady who was serving us up the shoes. I was. You can understand why I thought. And he was. Ooh. You can. We've under- already got a flashback. Well, yeah, but it's a flashback to something we've not seen. So at least they're not just showing us the exact same scene. Saturate the colours, put white borders. I get the feeling what happened here is they filmed this scene, realised that it made the scene too long, and just went, ah, put us a flashback later on, it'll be fine. I get the feeling I get the feeling that everyone in this had a collective stroke if I'm being honest. Right, here we go, right. So Mr. Pre will be able to teach Latin today, or indeed never again. Because he's dead. Because he's dead. Oh my god, more foreshadowing. Isn't that cool? He died here alone. No. Oh, no. Uh, but, uh, right, so in this, we've very clearly got the fact that, like, you know, we've already set up, kids hang themselves while they're on holidays, this guy has died on his own whilst on school holidays. Fracking has turned up without anyone realising A it. hole has appeared in the ground and there's something underneath the surface. This could be interesting. Not- None of this is related. <laughs> no. There's so many just little things at the beginning. The, of the earth years. yawned open by the power of witchcraft. Look! I do like the fact that 
Oh, you see, it's a joke, but I also like the idea that Jack the Ripper was a slaughterian. Yes. Because, like, I like the idea that this entire school has been hiding the fact that Jack the Ripper's identity is completely known to the world. They just aren't telling anyone because they're protecting him. That would have been a funny joke. I genuinely think that would have been a good joke, the concept that Jack the Ripper is a slaughterian. It's just that, oh, yeah, but he was a slaughterian, so we will keep his identity a secret. I mean, everyone, I mean, let's be honest here. Everyone knows, <laughs> everyone knows it was Queen Victoria. Everyone knows it was Queen Victoria, Oh, here we go. I take a look at Hell of the Ground. Talking about the three-headed hound of Hades, where'd you find Hades, Hugh? Uh, Stoke. <laughs> Stoke on Trent, yes. I live next to him. I don't know why you passed that question off to me. Like, I don't like, know either. Like, like, why were you expecting a sensible answer? Well, I wasn't really. I was more hoping that we could riff on it, really. To be fair. With the help of his faithful dog, slay the beast. So... Yeah, there, there. There is a dog that is identical to the Mr. Chips. So, to we... send your chips. <laughs> send your chippy. That we saw earlier. So as far as we're concerned, this is what I thought, and I did I did say this right thing. Oh, hang on a minute. Mr. Chips is immortal. Because yeah, he missed, got from yeah. slaughter to immortality. I always thought to myself, okay, Mr. Chips is immortal. Yes, yeah, so we got Mr. Chips is the same dog from before. We've got the fact there's creatures from the underworld coming up, a teacher's died, a student has hanged themselves. So much setup. And of course, here comes the military. So the military's turned up. And, like, so you'd think, okay, all this is happening, something's got to happen out of this. But, but no. Now it's just time for rugby. Yes, which, to be fair, is an institution in the UK, so that's fine. Oh, I'm fine with this. Oh, God. She's the goddess. I'm looking for the goddess. Literally, the, the goddess, goddess is a woman. woman. The woman. Any woman. <laughs> what is that from? Uh, that is from a 1980s uh, videotape for dating sites, where somebody submitted that research down with the rose and just says, I'm looking for the woman. Sorry, I'm looking for the goddess. Okay, right. So basically he... It is unironic, which makes it funnier. The fact, it's the fact that as he goes, anyway, we, we are now we are now riffing on something, well, not even... But can you tell how little we want to pay attention to this movie, that we just riffed on something completely different and forgot to pay attention? I'll also say they've not at one point introduced what goddesses and gods are at this point, which just means sixth formers. Yes... Oh yeah, oh yeah. That, that, that's a uh, that's a plot point, isn't it? The the sixth one must have an orgy at some point. Yes, they do have an orgy. It is. There's there's no particular reason why they do. There's no particular reason why why you know it makes sense to the plot. It's just like the director wanted it to happen. Mm. It's almost as if he's a little bit creepy. <laughs> Sorry, I just I, I will I will say that. That was an unironic laugh out of me, and I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, because you saw Lib Cock. No, he's it's, in it's, love, it's, you, it's, he's in love. It's just the way you said it. I'm just, why am I? It's just that. It's just, I like that. But that was an all right delivery there. You know, the thing, they say, think of the, think of the upper sixth. They sell it in sixth form, and like, again, we've got a whole, like, corruption thing. I don't know, I know that one's a bit of a stretch, but I did think of it when I was like, you know, all these sick formers seem to be like disproportionate assholes, especially for the British schooling system. I mean, to be fair, when I became a sixth former, we immediately looked at everyone in the lower school and immediately thought, well, we're above you now. We did not throw balls at them. No, not not always. Sometimes. Mm. But not always. What were they talking about in there? Because I wasn't paying attention. I don't know if they were talking about kind of full stuff. Oh yeah, this... I also like the fact Who's that... Who's that character again? That's like the caretaker slash nurse that just kind of... That looks deformed. Yeah, that doesn't really go anywhere. You'd think maybe like the, uh, like a harbinger from hell, potentially, like in the original script, but no. Witchcraft. Yeah, exactly. A witch that helps. Oh yeah, here's here's this character that quite literally is always getting abused, and we're supposed to find it funny. Now, we're, now the worst part which, which this film does with this is where we're supposed to find it funny... Right up until he's crying and calling home, and then we're supposed to feel sad for him. Was that a dead duck? Yes. In the foreground. What you're t- telling me is this film. Good when... morning, Gloucester. So, so the um, so the film's trying to liven itself up with dead poultry. <laughs> <laughs> that's the right one. Uh, that's an all right joke. That's an old bike. I appreciate the old bike. We're establishing the cadets thing here. That's not bad, actually. We're st- no, we're establishing the fact that they have been essentially forced into doing running because the six formers are abusing power. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, what year are they supposed to be in? I'm not sure. They look like year 10s. I'd say potentially year 11s, but then again, who transfer schools in year, in year 11? 11, yeah. 
If you are not English, you do not understand a word we just said. No, but it doesn't really matter, does it? No, to be fair. We're just so for uh, to be fair for a for, for a foreign listener, um, an, a sixth former is someone aged seventeen to eighteen. That's when you've got non non required education, basically. Yeah, so that's what we refer to as A levels. It's what you do before you go to university. And basically, all the sixth forms here are abusing power to everyone else who is younger than that. A year eleven is someone doing their what's referred to as GCSEs. So it's the last the, year of mandatory education. Yeah, exactly. So you go from years. Uh, years 1 up to year 13 in school. There is no such thing as a year 14 because at year 14 you're in university. I met some right cunts in the army cadets when I was when I was in sixth form. None of them were particularly intimidating. They were all just a bit twatty if I'm being honest. Only, Which this film does bring across quite well. I only knew one guy when I was at school whom I was aware was in the army cadets and he was a bit of a weirdo. Like on not... school tunnels, foreshadowing. Yeah, there we go. I'm not like I'm not. Get... You can see the gas leaking out as well. You can see the... the gas, which is for the worst joke in the, in yeah, the film. Yeah, for for well, no, for the worst missed joke in the entire. Film. No, but it's the any... worst joke in the film. Can... It doesn't exist. We can't mess. We can't insult a film for what it doesn't do. We have to insult a film for what it does do. But anyway, I knew a guy. He was the only one I knew who was actually in the cadets. Right. He was short. He was quite plump, but he was an okay person. But he was a bit weird, because for his entire life he wanted to be in the cadets. He wants to be in the cadets, and then he wants to go to the army. And when we were in year 10, me and him were having a conversation, and I asked him with all genuine seriousness, because I was just... Fracking! Yeah, fracking. Technology! <laughs> um, I, was, I was just asking him with all genuine um, like thoughts, um, what are you going to do if you don't get into the army, or if you get into the army and you get thrown out? And he, and he looked up, he looked at me, and with genuine seriousness, he went, I'll probably just be an assassin. Okay, that's good to know. Well, at least he's got his career prospects all sorted. No, absolutely. The best... Should have gone to school like this, I would have set him up quite well for assassination. Yeah, the, the best part was, is he went, to the, he went to the army when he was 16, and he got sent out home after a month and a half because he couldn't take tra- basic training. Oh, good. So, um, he's probably an assassin now. That's good. So, there you go. Well, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, if I'm, he gets world class, you're dead. Oh no, absolutely! Because you'll find this recording. Oh no, absolutely! No, this is um, this is actually post mortem. Mm. Uh, this is a post mortemus. So um, send my um, send my award and the podcast awards to my family. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you guys in December. Mm. But yeah, so here's the infinite sinkhole that leads to hell that's got literally no bottom. It smells of sulfur. Is it sulfur? Um, it's fart gas, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be sulfur. And he lights up a fan. Yeah, he lights up green. Yeah, what what I'm trying to think. Is it sulfur's the thing which blows green in the um, in a gas test? So he. Oh, I don't fucking know. I'm gonna look it up. I'm while not you're, a chemist. Oh God. I'm so. gonna look it up while you're riffing. Go now, you're, now you're expecting me to riff without your assistance. I you mean, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, I'm me. well. Jesus. But no, I was gonna say, like, so we're, again, we've got the foreshadowing of the uh, of the lights being handed over. So this kid was like. Um, it's not sulfur. Because sulfur. Sulfur's blue. Sulfur's blue, right here. Right. What's green flame test? Is what that was. So what's Sodium the off the top of my head. Uh, well, let's have a look. What was supposed to be? Uh, it could be copper, or it could be barium. Okay, so there's definitely copper. Yeah, because copper, that you know, well-known gas. Yes. Um. Fucking hell, this film is boring as bollocks. Only occasionally. Boron, it could be. That's bright green. Oh, that does sound like boring as well. Yeah, boron gas we could go for. Um, there's, the two, there's the two characters making out again. They're, they're, they're just kind of everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, they just went. Uh, sodium is a blue. It's kind of an invi- uh, intense yellow or blue. Uh, lead's blue. Why are we discussing this? We should because be, we should be more, entranced and it's more interesting. Because it's but, more oh intense. shit, it's Nick Frost's character, <laughs> finally. Hello Nick Frost, how are you? I like the fact they didn't even notice the the enormous camp the protest. The weed camp, with. two minutes down the road. I do like the fact that they're there and it's just like, oh hello kids, you want to buy some drugs? Like, remember kids, say no to drugs. Yeah, yeah. say no to fracking, critically kids. No, absolutely. Uh, I've got Mandy, Ecstasy, Mushrooms, they just keep on shouting things. I will say, so I do like this... I do like the fact that he shouts mushroom, which point a kid just kind of sticks their head out of a tent. But yeah, so there is this druggy kid, like druggy camp down the road from this uh, school, yes. which is also adjacent to this fracking corporation that has he- military helicopters at its disposal. Absolutely. And they're still you... here. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, there he is. It's the guy that got beaten up uh, by, um, by our... Uh... They're unleashing hell. Yeah. And there we go. I do genuinely think, up until this point... The film genuinely was just going to do 
like hell and monsters and wizards. That's what I wanted it to do. And then I think about 45 minutes in, someone walked in and was just like, budget's gone. Yep. Also, I do remember when I was looking, at one of the main things that we got actually when I was talking to the interview was apparently Nick Frost sounds like he's a fucking nightmare to edit for. You'll notice how many cuts there are here. I don't know why. Does he just riff? He just riffs, and he did not give the same fucking delivery twice. Which they said was a good thing, because he had, like, so much energy while he was on set. And it's like, as an editor, I can see that being an enormous problem. Because mm. you've got you to make sure that two jokes flow into each other. And if you're making a hundred different jokes, you're like, well, what can we do here? Also, if you didn't know who Nick Frost was, tell me you're not, like, tell me I'm not mentally, but I think it looks like he's hamming it up. Like, he's just chewing the scenery in this scene. Like, fucking... Oh, absolutely. I do, I do generally think, like, like, Nick Frost, I think he's trying, but I think the problem is he's trying in a Nick Frost way. And, and, and that, and trying in a Nick, Nick Frost, Frost needs direction. Nick Frost needs a good script. Nick Frost needs an exact line delivery to make, and he'll make it really well. I think the moment you'll give her just the instruction riff, it can become a problem. There's a lot of films that do that, and I think this suffers from the just riff. Yeah, problem. It's like like Ghostbusters. Oh my um, lord! You're right. Go- yeah. Ghostbusters improvisational comedy when it's trying to keep a tone. Yeah, had the same problem. Where it was just riff for a bit, please. I think it doesn't. I think this sort of shit doesn't work though, just when it's riffing off of stuff that's trying to have a consistent tone. Because you, you know, you look at something like this film, which would probably have done well if it had a sort of ridiculous tone. You know, wizards and shit. As oh, I go keep go go completely over the top, and I will be completely fine with this show. It's just the fact that it tries at times to be too serious. And at the moment, it's kind of doing the whole weird hamminess. But it's then a portal. suddenly a gateway. But then suddenly it's gone serious again. Leads straight down to hell. Except it doesn't, it's just no, a hole. Absolutely. Now the problem is that's the exact same joke they made two minutes ago. Yes. So they made the joke right at the beginning. What was the point of that scene, Hugh? The point of that scene was so that we could be introduced to Nick Frost. Yes. I agree. <sighs> Keep on showing all the different beasts. Showing the so Mr. Chips' his ancestor. What do you call it? You know, I'm trying to think. What would you call a Mr. Chips' ancestor? There's the first shot of the monster. Which for some reason we have as a nightmare sequence. Yeah, but he manages to give the exact look of it because apparently, you know. Wait, why the why the wait? So I, wait, hang on. Just, why was there a nightmare? Why sequence? is there a nightmare sequence in this? I don't know. If there is a sequence, can we at least have something sensible like that time where his dad touched him inappropriately? Oh God, he's dead now, so we can't say anything. So otherwise, <laughs> no. it just ruin the memory. No, but it happened. No, we all please. know it happened. Oh please. Oh no. That's what he was saying too. Oh dear, there he is, There's, Daddy. There he is. I do like the idea that the Sun newspaper allowed them to use their website. Um, oh, I'm sure that, I mean, what are they going to do? Are they going to, like, fucking <laughs> make the Sun look shit? Like, you know. I don't know. You could always make fun of it. I do also like the con. I- I've never been to a boarding school, right? No, thank so, God. No, no, no. I-, I-, I had a friend who applied for a job at boarding school, got the job, and then turned it down. Um, but, um, I don't. Like, correct me if I'm wrong here. I didn't think that boarding schools just said to kids, by the way, can you just walk around at night and make sure all the other kids are in bed? I was going to say, yeah, like, um, is there, is it just a bunch of, where do they sleep is my issue. What do you mean? Films like this. What, when does that kid sleep? He's up at 5 a.m. doing punishment drills. Up at 3 a.m. making sure no one's going around in his full school he, uniform. He, well, that's, well, it's because, because Lewis, in the original script, he's like an immortal human being. He doesn't need to sleep. He doesn't need to sleep, yeah. No, he doesn't need to sleep. That would have been an interesting he's, he's, one if he was, say, a harbinger from hell. Yeah, he's too busy going Cleggy. On. Who's next? Matthew Clegg. Matthew Clegg is next. This place is creeping me out. Just okay, all right, right, right. Now we've done a rapid tonal shift into him crying his fucking eyes out. Yeah, here's the thing. This place is creeping me out. But here's the thing. What so far has been creepy about this school? He's been abused, but nothing's creepy. I don't. I just don't get where the tone was going. Okay, so he's he's, he's crying his eyes out, full emotional breakdown. Actor showing a little bit of range. Yeah, just a little bit of range. And then oh one, no, and then suddenly oh no, in. it's a couple of X chromosomes. Surely it's quadruple X chromosomes. Fuck you. <laughs> Technically, it's five. I out. I out biology too. Ah. Uh! 
But uh, <laughs> but no. So here we go, and now he's fine again. And by because of Poon Tang around, the power of women is apparently enough to make him suddenly forget his depression. I will. I will everybody s- knows that's how it works. I will say this right here, right now. I don't like how this film treats women, despite no, the themes. No, I don't either. I don't like the fact that she is a sex former and yet she's portrayed as a sex object. Yes, I oh, don't that like gets that. worse later. Yes, that, that gets I, worse later. I do not like that either. Also, also, I do like the fact that the teacher is just smoking behind the cricket shed. That's nice. That's a good little. That's a good little thing. That's that, that, that's a, that's okay. That's a nice. Oh, you see, I and then they ruined it here. <laughs> They should have had that just as a brief off the cuff joke. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is the only scene where these two are on screen together. No, 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 no. Later on, I'm pretty sure they're on screen together. Yeah. That's all right then. I do. But yeah, so so not only is attractive Australian lady treated as you know an objective for this character here, but these two. What is the point of them meeting in that point? I don't know. And now the duck pond. But yeah, so here's the here's the sick form children. Like, oh, you're so northern. You're see- now, to be fair, this is a fine conversation. This is okay. This is I'm pointing out that he is northern. Yeah. But um, but like, oh, the fact that that character there, the Asian one, and I'm so sorry about the fact that she has to be the Asian character is good at chess. But her character is she's good at chess and beats boys at chess. Yeah, but the problem is here. Like, look, 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 this is this this speaks to a wider problem in just film. In the, I think there's a quite like obviously I'm not the person to speak on behalf of all minority actors. Because, I am. I mean, I'm not. No, no. I mean, tr- 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 tell me what you want me to say, and I'll say. And fair I'll enough. Done. What what what, I, what I'm going to say is the fact that there's a lot of actors who feel that it's genuinely a really really hard bad time thing. being gay. Well, it's a a lot of a lot of. That's a horror shot. Uh, that is a horror shot. A lot, of, but then it's him who's watching. Anyway, no, um, it's the fact that a lot of these actors are just forced into specific roles. So a lot of Asian actors basically get forced into, what's your role? Well, you're going to be the nerdy person. Why? Because you are. Because you are. Because that's the stereotype, and we're, we're sticking to it. And I do. Oh, I, look at him being northern. He is being northern. People don't tell you how hard it is being t- north. God. Like. I'm not being funny, but why is her makeup impeccable? I mean, you're never well? funny, mate. <laughs> oh, there we go. We just turned this off. That's fine, buddy. Don't you worry about it. I like the fact they got crav- he's got a cravat in his um his thing. And where's my lighter? Oh no! It's it's a, it's an exciting action sequence, Hugh. No, it's not though. Quickly, it? Smudge. Smudge. Who's that? It's just a random person. It's Smudge. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh great right, character? yeah. Here they come. He literally throws firecrackers at them because apparently he's now trying to kill them. And as you can oh, see, oh, they've got machine yeah, guns. Yeah, I was going to say, as I said earlier, they are packing heat. They've got a fucking machine gun. A fucking heat. Uh, right. Right. Now, here is here is the, big, the biggest mis- joke in the entire film. Oh yeah, but we'll we'll explain the mis- joke when the mis- joke could have happened. But here we do in fact have you know uh, a bunch of people. The firecrackers kicks it. The oh entire... my god! Crappy explosion jumps. Yeah, but the entire oh, they, couldn't they have afforded a standard shock effect? I do like the fact that he's just watching cricket. No, you don't. No, I don't. But there you go. Right, everything's on fire. The lake's on fire. Hard cuts to this person being phoned up while they're playing zombies in the background. I think that's Killing Floor? Well, it's they're killing zo- No, it's, I think it's Call of Duty. Anyway, uh, anyway, the, it's a methane leak. Anyway, they're fighting... They're fighting zombies because, they're, again, foreshadowing that never happens. <laughs> anyway, so what we've got here is we've got them all together in the kind of room. And the, the headmaster's just like, what the hell was that? And all of this thing. I can't believe this is all, you know... This is all happening. Oh, so the easiest joke again. Right there, you go. Right there, there, an... there. That would be good. Good foreshadowing. One of the easiest jokes they could have made there is, is just him have the phone ring. Have the phone. Cut the phone out and just go. Well, um, we'll have to just let that carry on then. And the camera just pans to show that the the lake is here. It is still ablaze. Yeah. Just Robert, a small one, yeah. Meredith. Turn the camera, lake's on fire. Yes, yeah, still. Absolutely. Silence in the room. Everyone turns their head. Easiest shot 
joke they could have done in the entire and film. It's the fact of the matter is, I thought of that joke while watching we this film. We both thought of that joke. Yeah, I was yeah. Like, if two people watching this can think of it, then yes. And we're not very good like writers, let's be honest here. We have not written a film. Okay, well, there's there's a vaguely like, there, there, there's your attempt. See, that could have been that could have been a joke that could have been a lot more subtle of just of just him going. Let's be honest here. I I would never be taking rise and terrifract. Just talk, have talk, talk. terrifract written on the sides that wheels into the room, and, 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 and have, or, have have him just go like shake his hand or, as it then just gets wheeled back out. Or better, do it do it do the same do the same style again, right? He looks left. And you see this, like, on fire. He says, I would never take a bribe for Terrafract. And zooms back out to see, like, five hampers all with the Terrafract logo. Yeah, absolutely. Because we've already had the Terrafract logo put on various bits. Yeah, so we could do lots of just very subtle jokes here. Also, the fact that this scene is already going on for too long. And I like, I do like the fact that everything's going on and the first thing he's, like, smoking. Smoking. Thing is, though, thing is, though, that's the joke they should have made immediately. It was a small gas leak. And we all know I wouldn't take, um, take... Uh, Bryce and Terrafrac. Now onto the important matter: smoking. Yeah. Like don't like we didn't we didn't need that extra minute. We could have just had that immediate joke. Unfortunately, that would have been funny. Also, we said Martin Sheen say out of his league when talking about <sighs> what? What, the, what? Okay, gay panic. Anyway, um, no, there you go. That was a gay panic joke. It's in 2019. Film. Can we not? Can well, we not in, have... in a film about where someone dies due to gay gay bullying, we, you don't a, have a gay a panic pa- joke. Yeah, no. But then again, we were watching. Was it Spider Man One? And we had a gay panic joke in that. Yes, that was yeah. 2002. This is 17 years later. Yeah. Who's at Spot this weekend? I am, sir. You're always at Spot. Yeah, I'll say, you never you, you, leave. You've, I've never seen you sleep. Not that I watch my students sleeping or anything. That could have been a good gag, but there we go. I do like the quote of Games Kit. You know, actually, no, I don't. I, don't. Clegg, I think Clegg is actually the only good actor in this. I'll say this. Now. I think he. That and possibly Butterfield. He's all right, actually. Brian Butterfield. Yeah, Brian Butterfield. I mean, I, I, like the surname of bullied gay kid is actually Brian Butterfield, the son of fucking Ender from Bender's Game. Oh, he is Ender from Ender's he Game. He is isn't Ender he? from Ender's Game. Oh, He's right. also in. I can't remember the name of the film. Probably won an award or two, but fucking won the Clock Tower. I think it was. Fuck it. I don't know. I don't want. Oh, there's the there's the feathering. Get it? It's funny. Do you right, understand now the joke? Again, this would have been funny had they not then had this kid crying in the next scene phoning his mum. That's the problem. He does just at one point straight up break down and start crying. I just, again, tonal shifts that this film straight up doesn't understand. Oh, look, understand. it's Smudge. That best character. Also, also, do we have to keep the kid walking away for the entire scene? For the entire shot. It's That's a bit awkward. weird. It's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, the kid's just been, the kid's just been taking drugs the entire time. Yeah, oh, it's snuff. It's, 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 it's like tobacco opium. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, it's still drugs. It's not opium, it's just tobacco, but yes. Still drugs. See, she's Asian, so she has to be from Hong Kong. She can't just be Oh, from... and, and she's so confident that she's doing it. A... Like... Don't, like, don't, don't get me wrong, at times she shows a really, really good character, but it's more along the lines of, what are two defining character traits? She's from Hong Kong... And she can beat people at chess, and she's a bit confident. And, and she's I'm... Asian. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the bit from Hong Kong. It's of. worth saying that twice. I just, I don't know. I think, I think this film had a distinct problem where it essentially wrote. Da- I think this this film had napkins where he just wrote down the name of a character and like three points about them, and then that was it. Hang. So just main character, northern, wants to sleep with woman, uh, brave occasionally. He then handed that to the actor and went, that, Go! that is your motivation. Other guy is just like, you know... Oh, suicide joke! <sighs> no one would actually ever make that joke in real life. <laughs> That's no. a horrible thing to say. Oh, no, absolutely. But then again... These like, characters are very unrelistic, aren't they? It's like, a, by which I mean northern. It's a film. Like, you can... I, I can get... I, I, I'm fine with them getting away with, like, the occasional unresponsive thing. Oh, yeah, here's the, here's the joke where he's just like, oh, no... Someone, this girl is actually with someone else. I'm now the most depressed human being in the entire world because I lived my they've, entire they've life. They've talked twice, and he's in love with them. There Here you go. go. Yeah, there. Oh, is... you and Steve. That implies a stepdad situation there. Yeah, he's so basically. Oh, and the mum hung up yeah. on him. So this... laugh, laugh at the child. <laughs> this kid has been abused the entire laugh. time. You now find out that his parents don't want him there, and he's got a stepdad. 
Laugh. Yeah, isn't this funny? It's hilarious. And then this kid's got alcohol. Here, here, here is half. Is this probably halfway through the film? Oh, fucking. Halfway through the film. Um, halfway through the film. I don't know how to tell. Halfway through the film. In just under oh my half. god, we actually are halfway through this film already. Yeah, we are But half... nothing's happened! Yeah, ha- we are 48 minutes through this film, and at the moment, nothing's happened. And now here's the thing. Like, Wait, Hugh, what we... has happened in the last 48 minutes? What's happened in the last 48 minutes? He's come to the school and he's sad. Now, 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 I'm, I'm sorry for bringing... Also, the lake's on fire. Yeah, and the lake got on fire. Now, I'm sorry. Oh, and the fracking happened. Now, I'm sorry for bringing this up again, but a couple of, a couple of days ago, no, yesterday, in fact... No, no, for, no, no. two days ago, we watched the first Spider-Man movie. The yes. Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. Now, at what time stab did he, did he get bitten by the Red Hoop Spider? Ten minutes! Exactly ten minutes. At what point did the Green Goblin become the Green Goblin? Fifteen minutes! At fifteen minutes. minutes. At what time stab did he first start demonstrating his Spider-Man powers? Twenty minutes! Yeah, that's, that is, that's the thing. So, in twenty minutes, he's demonstrating... Flashback! We're already on a fucking flashback again! That is, and that these are these are scenes. We've I seen. think he was badly, but he was my roommate. Your room, fucking. Do you not get the? Do you not get it yet? No, I get, get the duality of the entire thing. And here we go. Oh, now, the noose. And now, now the problem is, at this point, the film is two very different films. The film is. I remember this coming out. Fucking. Nowhere. Yeah, he just tries to kill himself by hanging himself and shooting himself with an air rifle. Now, here's the thing, though. At this point. The film is two different films. Yeah. It is a drama, a like okay, a forty-five minute drama about a kid going to a boarding school and experiencing tr- troubles, and then someone sat down and went, "But what if we put demons in hell in it?" But what if we didn't? But what if we didn't? <laughs> but if we what, didn't? what if we cut? What if we cut twenty minutes from this movie, made it a ninety-minute movie, and just made it? He turns up, and in the first half hour, someone's been eaten by a demon from hell, and we have an hour of him fighting demons from hell. What if, Lewis? That right. was the plot. So we've just had a suicide attempt. And now it's time for jokes. And that's what you leave me, your snuff box. Get it? Because it's funny. Because it, cause it's, cause it's a callback to when he got bequeathed <sighs> daddy's... I hate this film. This is awful. <laughs> Why did uh, we do this? Why are we doing this? Why we, did we do this? Because our one viewer is going to enjoy watching uh, this. This is where we get regret. Isn't this is where we get regret. Should I open up the twirl Easter egg and date this video even more? Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm going to open up the twirl Easter egg and date this video even more. Now, the thing is about this movie, right? The, 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 none of, no one can act in this with the exception of fucking Butterfield and... Brian and Butterfield. Bri- 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 Brian Butterfield. Now, here's Margot Robbie again. She's back. Oh, for fuck's sake. I get the feeling that, like... This ha- is the most unwanted side plot. Look at Ibrahim. Look at him. Look how- at cute little Ibrahim. How do you think they got Margot Robbie? Like, straight up, how did they get Margot Robbie? $5.2 million budget. <laughs> <laughs> how much money do you think they spent on Margot Robbie? I, I'm going to go for $500,000. That's a lot of money. But then again, it is a lot of Margot Robbie. But she is top billing. Is she top billing? Yes. What, on the DVD? Yes. I'm looking this up. She's, hang on, fucking, i got it here. Right, oh. I'm holding, oh, right. I am holding the DVD, and on the front, she's not on it. What the f- Asa Butterfield, don't stash out my hands. Asa Butterfield, Finn Cole, Hermione Caulfield, Ma- Michael Sheen, not Martin Sheen, we've got Martin Sheen the entire time, haven't we? Oh well, Nick Frost and Simon Peck. She's top fucking build on IMDb and Wikipedia. Yeah, but that's because it bill it builds on how popular the actor slash actress is. Oh, we missed the fag joke. God damn it. <sighs> oh, we did we miss the fag joke? No, we probably did. Like, I don't know. I'm going to open up this, uh, like, but, like, to date this video, I'm going to open up my Cadbury's Twirl Easter Egg, which Lewis has bought me. You're welcome. Uh, Lewis has got Dairy Milk Easter Egg, which I bought him, sat next to him, which he hasn't eaten yet. I'm sorry. No, I'm not, I'm fine. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy this, by the way. Listen, Thank you. He, he was, she was top building online, and I feel quite the fool. You do feel, feel like quite the fool. Now, now, here we have the first idea that maybe demons from hell are coming. Because they're all around the hole. The don't shafts we, have failed. Don't we find out later on that they're blind? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> do you don't? Do you not? How do you not remember the absolute marvels 
of Slaughterhouse Rules and every single point about it like I have. To be fair, How have you not thought about this movie for every single waking hour of your life since we saw it last year? To be fair, year? mate, we could always think of um, my favourite part of this DVD, which is the special features. Is there special features? Uh, yes, you can select which scene you start from. Hey! <laughs> what I like about it, the fact that it's got a loading bar. Yes, this, this, this Blu-ray actually has a fucking loading bar. Yeah, but you've, yeah, the, yeah, the people listening to this have bought the Blu-ray slash DVD, so they know about that already. It's Doomsday. Yeah, but now they're just eating mushrooms. It's a mushroom. I do not understand. <laughs> so Nick, so Nick Frost and Simon Pegg are in this film because it's made by their production company, right? Probably. I get the film that Nick Frost and Simon Pegg come as a package deal now. Yeah. Except for when they're doing Star Trek, because because Simon Pegg has actually written yes uh, and, Hollywood movies, and uh, and Simon Pegg was very briefly in Star Wars. As oh, he was, was he? Portion dude. Oh yeah. Oh, well, let's, let's, there we go. Yeah, but it's only because he was in um. It was only because that he man's was, now dead. Yeah, I was gonna say. It, to be fair, it's only because they were in um, uh, Star Trek with J.J. Abrams. Where's the bloody chopper, indeed? Yeah, but... in your car and running. There now, here's the thing. We're now 50 minutes in, right? Yes. And they're still not bothering Blood. showing... They're still not bothering showing us the actual monsters. Now, now, to be fair, there was a very good reason for that, right? And they I... look awful. Well, that's one reason. The main reason, I think, is because I was under the strong impression that there was going to be a whole army of demons here. Like, a whole... Different ar- types. Yes. And as you may have alluded to, listener, you may not realise yet, but there is but one creature. It's just the one... It's just the one mole. It is the mole, yes. Yeah, well, to be fair, there's multiple of the moles, but right. it is just... Right, now here's the bit which I'm confused about, right? There's a chopper. Um, it, I... there... what, what takes it down? Nothing. Actually, nothing. Because these it things... It just crashes. These things can't jump in the air. They're just moles. They're just, they're just they're kind of... just moles. But they manage to take down a chopper on its own. Right. The, the chopper goes to ground. Right. Now, in the screenplay, that is where it reads, the chopper crashes. At which point, someone asked the question, but... But, oh, no. but Kalegi, or whatever your name is, why does the, um, the chopper go down? At which point, he looks at you and goes, didn't you hear me? The chopper goes down. Cleggy, that, that right? That character there is called Cleggy, the fucking, uh, the fucking master. Oh, sorry. One. Oh, sorry. Who's the um, Crispin? Crispin. Sorry, Crispin. I didn't meet you. See. Yeah. I'd like to hang out at some I asked point. Him a question. Yeah, you ask everyone a question. Well, wow. You, no, no, I'm no, a teacher. That's my job. Uh huh. And now I was underage drinking. Yep. Not like in Shazam. Uh, I was gonna say in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, actually, uh, they had to put black bars there, so in the Japanese release. Of Slaughterhouse Rules, which was watched by one person. They put black bars over him. You also know he's drinking in, uh, in Georgia, was it? It was smoking. It was smoking, yes. Because we're now doing, like, God Save the Queen Britannia and all that lot, but there's a bunch of ties in there. Core Blimey. I don't remember the name of this song. All I remember is the song in Johnny English when um N- when not Nigel Farage when Nigel Farage <laughs> <laughs> yeah when Nigel Farage is being brought to the uh, Pascal Savage yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah yeah Pascal Savage a not better Nigel. film <laughs> yeah uh, was is, is being brought to the thing to be crowned more fucking flashbacks wait you already Chapman he's a school legend he went around and killed everyone what. <laughs> So, so, so we find out we find out that that Nick Frost's character is a school legend. Yep. What we don't find out is why he's a school legend. He is just a school legend. He just is. He he was in rugby once, and and they tried to escape down the tunnels. Right. Why are we now doing camp? I don't understand. I don't anything. appreciate your racist German accent, filth. <laughs> I do not understand. Well, women, I concur. Right, it has now been almost an hour. Right, it's fifty-seven minutes. Right, here we go. Pretend it's the end of the world. We're all that's left of humanity. Oh, what a lovely joke! All right, <laughs> oh. Joe would have been funny if that, if was, that was true. Happening. Yeah. Right. And now here's the crash. Chopper. Right, here is crash helicopter set. I don't know what is wrong with this set. 
It looks thin. But it looks like it's a set. <laughs> it looks thin, is what it looks like. It looks like they've taken very thin metal and shaped it into the shape of a helicopter. Yes. I... It doesn't look like a helicopter. I don't know what's so fun. Right. Can we also yeah, can we also point oh, the tone of this is so fun because they're all just stood around going like, what happened here? That's a crashed fucking helicopter. They're not just going, oh my god, what happened? Everything's on fire. All the fracking person. Where are gone. the bodies? There's a crashed fracking person. Like, a crash fracking person. Yeah, crash fracking yeah, person. Crash fra- yeah, the fracking person went near and crashed into the ground. And there's a bunch of dead helicopters. Yep. Oh my god. I don't understand it. Right, mate, we need to call the police. The police? What are the police going to do? It's almost as if... It's know, almost as if that's their fucking job. Yeah, it's almost as if that would make the film shorter. A fox. <laughs> I'm glad that you had the exact same reaction I did. And this is the bit where I get uncomfortable. Oh yes, this is an uncomfortable section, isn't it? This is the baby, isn't it? They, we, they're not even showing it here, like right straight. I'm not. There we go. Now we see it for the first time. Here is our first look at one of the beasts, and it's not even one of the beasts. No, it's a baby, and this is at this point where both of us start to get uncomfortable. Okay, right. Oh, what was... What is Butterfield doing? It just decides to go down... Do you down, see him jumping up and down camp-like? It just decides to go down a top for no apparent reason. Yeah. It just does. Like, oh, no, no, Don't do no, it, please. No, there we go. God. Oh, for God's sake. And Female she... empowerment, Hugh. Oh, God. I will say, I like the fact that when she beats it, some of the blood gets on the camera. I mean, it takes me out of the movie, because I, I suddenly realise there's a camera, but at the same time, like, I, I didn't care about this film enough in the first oh, place. Oh, God. No, I know. That's why I'm talking for, about something else. Yes. Right, Butterfield is now chewing the fucking scenery now, because he is also reacting to this in multitude of ways, primarily non-realistic. Well, he's, he's reacting to this in, in real time, because someone hasn't told him. No one's told him how to act, because he's now acting campy as fuck. Yeah, which was just give her a fag, despite the fact she's 17. Just straight up give her a fact. Why? Yeah. Because... The... Oh, right, right. Give me your fags, fine. Oh, no. Oh, it's foreshadowing. So, we now assume naturally there is literally a fucking pit to hell, right? And Reasonably. That would... Yes. And so at this point, we get... Oh, right. Oh, oh yeah, the, dun- the, the weird Dungeons and Dragons Right, do you, want us, do, you want, do you want to hear my um, conspiracy theory on this? What, Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> I've got many about that, specifically in this film. Yeah, all right. I'm convinced, because this scene would have taken next to no effort, right? Because mm. it's not particularly well shot. It's a room and it requires two actors, right, okay? Mm. You're aware that this showed before a critical role, right? Yes. I'm fairly sure, and here's the conspiracy theory. When they realised they were coming on before a critical role, they filmed this scene to get the, like, 500 people in that room to go and see this film. Hang on, did they, is this the scene they showed? This was in the trailer, air quotes, like the like the preview thing that they showed at Comic Con, and I'm cynically convinced they filmed this because it has nothing to do with the rest of the film. No, they just suddenly leave and then they're in the plot. I'll also point out that where I was at at this point in the film, you know, where he says you're a necromancer and shit like that. I genuinely still thought there was going to be magic and shit in this. I still thought he was going to be a fucking necromancer or something. He, he gets necromancy powers. That would have been interesting. But no, they just bring him like a dead rodent. And they just put it on his table. And they're just like, hey, can I show you out here? Despite the fact, you know. I just don't get it. Who is that character again? It's it's the best character in the film, though. So how do you not realise who it how is? How do I not remember that character? How do you not remember about the fact that, you know... It's, it's... We have the deeply deformed matron. And that's not a bad prop. That's a good prop. It's not. It's not a bad prop at all. Like, I'll, I'll give them that. Like, I do think the prop department's done well. Like, I will give. Them yeah. That. No. Oh no. No. The practical effects team on this are actually pretty good. Yeah, but I think the problem is the I digital think... effects on the other hand are wank. But anyway. <sighs> yeah, but you had five million dollar budget. I think it's possibly rare, even undiscovered subterranean species. Oh my god, the clever character said so, and she's Asian. <sighs> I'm more concerned about the fact that. It's a round discovered subterranean species. Done. We've we've suddenly solved it. Yep. Right. This is where you throw it in the fire because that would actually be decent. You can throw the prop away. Throw it in the fire. Have it burning. Yeah. Have it burn in like green. Nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. 
Oh my god, how are we still coming up with better scenes for this shit? We came up with better scenes for this after we saw it, and we're just ha- we're just getting on, you know. Mr. Spray in the ground stuff. We'll see you to this on Monday. I'm going to have to notify your parents, and I'm going to ignore the Apache attack helicopter. I do like the fact that literally no one's called the police at all. This has all happened. They found like a crash chopper, and they oh she's up. oh wait hang on she's standing up she's standing up she's 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 fighting the power Lewis yes Ro- get your baps out again <laughs> please no please don't please let me just have one film where we don't objectify women for five minutes Blade Runner twenty forty nine yes they're all holograms and they're except all e- except for the fact where they. Have you know prostitutes? Exactly, holograms. All of them. Every single one of them. Uh, here yep. is. Wait, this is. I think I'm pretty sure this is the first time we actually get a look at the monster. Get a proper look at them because yes. he jumps through the window and then you know. I know here's um here he is in. This is right. This is fine. This, this is, is fine. funny. This is funny to me because he's turning because he's going mental for no apparent reason. Straight up, we don't understand why he is just going mental. He's going mental because he's found out that Wallace is the one that's been doing the things, and so as a result, he's lost it. I don't know a single person who plays D&D with ears on. Um, my friend Davis used to play with cat ears on. Once or twice. Yeah, Davis, though. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he's like the straightest shooter. Don't do this to me, not now. <laughs> I, do, I do like Davis, to be fair. He was, he, he's a nice guy. But then... But here's the thing, right? We're looking. We're looking at kind of what they're doing, right? So, 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 so Martin Sheen, Michael Sheen, whatever his name is, he's now taking charge, right? He's yeah. trying to be a headmaster. If he's this inept, how the hell was he headmaster in the first place? Or is that the joke? I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was going to say that is the only joke I would like to go because I have had some pretty god awful headmasters I've worked with. Uh, my headmasters were pretty good, but then again, I went to a good school. Yeah. More. Why? More. This is the third flashback. Fourth, I think. There's a sinister evil lurking beneath our school. Right. Again, at this point, still absolutely no thought this might not be hell. At this point, we've still got all the thoughts it could be hell, and we're an hour and five minutes in. What happens at the hour and five minute point of like Avengers Infinity War? Everything out. Literally everything. The film's over by then. He, f- he fists the universe. <laughs> That's end game, mate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Please, daddy. Okay. Rel- there we go. Nice Relatively good practical fact. Green flame. I like the fact that we've established we can use green flames to detect them. That might come in useful next. It won't. Right, is anyone paying attention to what the fuck he's actually saying here as he rants on about China? I don't think literally... Is this supposed... Right, we're... Right. Wait, was he this ranting is... about China or I wasn't paying attention? He was ranting about fucking natural gas and shit. But here's the problem. This is... This is... Being done for laughs, right? When he should be building up tension because there's supposed to be some shit about to happen. Yeah, the big dog, this thing. Yeah, right? Here we go. Murderous murder bot. So you just tried to build up tension and humour at the same time. Bad idea. Yeah, already this is not what's gonna work. What is the obsession here to not show the monster? Because it's not like they're because he's because he's because he's watched a lot of horror movies and the horror movies don't show the monster. Yeah, and he's not realised that that's not Ugh, fucking hell. It's because the... those ones were actually you know had a tense tone and not because it was Gorefest. For Gorefest, you show the fucking monster. Yeah, basically. Good morning, Mister Chippy. Yeah, I was gonna say the no, no Mister doesn't die; he gets run over by a car. Oh fuck! I forgot that. <laughs> Damn it. I was going to say, how would you ever forget? Okay, well, I appreciate the joke to the Skoda, right? This no, is no, where... Okay, I, will, I will give you, I quite like... This is perhaps, like, the, the funniest sequence. No, that's him a good get, joke. Him, that's a good joke. Yeah, him getting in, putting on the driving gloves, being very sensible about the but entire again, thing. But again, are we supposed to be a comedy here, or are we supposed to be a tense horror movie? <sighs> it's supposed to be a black comedy, is A black comedy. But it's not, though, because this, 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 lu- this is a ludicrous sequence. Yeah. Races us through them, reverses, and there's Mr. Chips. Good joke. <laughs> I will admit, I like this joke. Yeah, but the problem is, I it's like a good the... joke in the middle of a tense sequence. I like the fact that he runs over his dog, and he gets out, and then he just gets murdered. I will admit, that's a... Yeah, you've already said that, darling. Like, I'm sorry, but you've literally... Already... And he's dead. 
No, oh, he's just dead, isn't he? No, yeah, yeah, he dies. They never show him dying, and then and then there's just his head. Well, to be fair, it's just as well they did that they didn't try and build up tension there because there was absolutely none. And then he's just, and then it's in front of them, despite the fact that he went behind the cinema. No oh, fuck. Cinema, it. the car. We can't be bothered with internal consistency. No, in and there is the first time we get to see wait, the what? monster. Wait, wait, wait. The dogs. Wait, what? Wait, what? But what? But he ran over Mr. Chips. I guess he ran over the mole monster that's like the size of the car. What? I, uh, what the fuck? I I I I think they Did this film just forget that Mr. Chips is dead? I think the film just forgot Mr. Chips died. <sighs> what the Okay, I do generally think they just forgot. Oh yeah, this film forgot the music exists. Yeah, here's here's the first like, set of proper music. This for is it. not an appropriate track. No, we're supposed to. Be... Are you building horror? No, it's supposed to be doing the whole. Look how much he loves the girl. Boobies and uh, for underage sake. boobies. They abs- They have do. They do that. And to be fair, she's not underage. It's just wrong. It's still weird. And then he, and then you know the monster has a bit of a humorous moment where it looks a little good. <laughs> like like Scooby Doo. When you know someone's sneaking up, awesome him. Scooby Doo, where are you? You're in Please this. Go. You're Kill in this me terrible B movie. This is actually a B movie, isn't it? It is. Well, no, B- it can be because they tried. <laughs> yeah, but B- some B movies can try. Yeah, I think this is a B movie where everyone involved was trying their best, but no one knew at all what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the major issue. I think he had a concept. I think I think this guy might be a concept man. That's all well and fucking good. Do you want to hear a concept right now? Not watching this film. Good, I'm glad that you don't, because you can come up with them in a second. Okay, good. Yeah. What if there was a horror movie? Okay. Where the main enemy was the light in your house. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's all I've got. I don't have any idea of how to execute that or make a good for a one and a half hour film, but will you please give me five point two million pounds? Yeah, right here you go. Done. <laughs> and that's right. how you make slow house rules. All right, all right, fantastic. All right, I've got, I've got, I've got a concept. Then I've got a concept. Oh god. It's... Oh shit! Oh shit! She's feeling bad about leaving her brother behind. Literally, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And there's also the, the realization. But I'm in love. Flashback. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> All right, here's mine. It's an action movie, right? All right, okay. Where the main character fights the sun. Get done. Five point two million. million. Five point two million dollars, please. I have no idea how to execute it. No, but I don't it's know what an we're idea. doing. I don't know how the sun could ever be implemented, but we're doing it. But it sounds like a vaguely okay-ish idea. Absolutely. Now here are the two kids that just appear. Oh, like they forgot them. I think the film just forgot everything because already Mr. Chips is dead, but not dead. Yeah. Uh, Martin Sheen's character just gets murdered off screen. <laughs> he of does just get off screen. You can't just off screen like Michael Sheen. Okay, here we go. Right, two lot time. <laughs> this is where you pull the fucking armor and spear off the side and you have fun. To be to be fair. Okay, no, Johnny. That's nice. To be fair, they do like go out with cricket bats because Shaun the Dead did it, so why can't we? Yes. What is it about? Like, like I don't get. This. I wanted to see her in full armor here. Right again. We're not a tense horror movie now. We are an action movie. We're a comedy action horror movie. All right. Here's the thing, though. Genuine question. What is it about British comedy, uh, like action movies, where they sit down and just go, give them a cricket bat? Um, so many British action movies just give them a cricket bat. Like, you ever played um, Zombie U? Yes. Uh, where the main weapon, the main, the main... Corpse is going to finger her! Uh, where you um the, no, the main, no, I'm, the aware, main I'm, yeah. I'm aware I'm aware of the exact point you're getting to yeah, it's a cricket the, bat yes. yeah it's a cricket bat so like why right not everyone in Britain likes cricket that's fine also, right <sighs> here is here is just again another part of the movie I just distinctly don't like this is a film well because it sexualizes 16 to 18 year olds oh yeah um, I just don't like that at all I don't want it in my movie it's very important to remember that two people have already died <laughs> It is very important to understand that they're making a joke and they're like, ah, the Latin orgy. And it's like, yeah, we've seen two people get murdered in front of us. This film is so tonally fucked. Oh no, he's getting annoyed by the head boy. Get it? Because it's funny. Oh, is, this, is this gay panic? Yes. Yes, this is gay panic. I'd say it's gay panic. I just... Right, okay. So, yeah, 
there, there's funny. Kind of, yeah, it's funny. Joke. It's funny because the gay man knows how to pleasure another man. Did you get it? Yes. Did you get it, Lewis? Lewis, I don't think you're. Appreci- I nearly got the joke. Lu- do you want to do it again? Just Lu- so I can, Lewis, just so I don't I think you're check. appreciating this. Okay, here's the here's the other just kind of oh look the mole's gonna eat your out joke and then the mole eats her. Does it? I think that's what happens. I, I deleted this part of the film from my brain. Uh to be fair, it's so did I. But like this is like if I remember what happened. Why didn't they take those swords? That would have been entertaining. That would have been. Ent- well, that, in- that's, I wanted to see her in a full suit of armor. That would have been good. There would have been so many interesting things you could have done with this movie. But they also, didn't. they left him behind. I thought earlier in the, well, the film we no, established he, he was missing. No, he comes and finds them, doesn't he? And then he's just like getting murdered. Okay, we're, like they're, they're translating from Latin because they're speaking Latin because of course they are. Doesn't that wake up? I'm um, from the north. You've literally not been established as a character in your own right at all through this entire movie. We're here to save you because it'd be a funny scene, even though it's not a funny scene. Of course he has. Why wouldn't he not have? Oh no, please, can we not? Can we just not? I just don't want this film to exist at the moment. I just want it to stop existing for five minutes. And He's then... going Fifty Shades! I think you and I are officially tired of this film now. Yeah, but we've got, you know... We've got half an hour oh, to go. still going wrong. So it'll be fine. Like, what is the tone hour? right now? Comedy. Sex rom-com. It is sexy rom-com. It is, isn't it? Like, it's um, it's, it's your... Amer- not American. Yeah, American Pie. That's what it's currently doing. We're actually doing American Pie now. Aren't we? Oh no, we're Christ. absolutely. This is exactly what we're doing. We're doing American Pie. Someone he watched American Pie at the moment, and then here's the best character. Already, already, this this scene is a hundred times better. When when they've just this guy just turns up. So he, why are you mental? Because I am. Yes, I like. He's sweaty. He's mental. He's from Predator. I like this guy. Like I like the fact that his eyes and his hair are. Giving him away, Pristine, yeah. yeah, giving him away so much. It's a good gag, and the best part is, it's not even a gag they realised they were making. Oh, and here, here is Simon Pegg. Oh, my word, he's wearing wellies. I appreciate the wellies. Is Simon Pegg any, Pegg any good in this? No, 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 he's not. Simon Pegg's playing Simon Pegg. We are watching teenagers. Oh no! Oh, Finger bash each oh other. no! 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 His hand, his hand's been eaten by the by the thing. This one hasn't it? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I do like how polite he was. I will admit. I'll give you that. He doesn't die there. I'd like to point out. No. I'm a necromancer. No, it's not. We've just seen the dog's not dead. And here we get actual shots of the monsters. I think that was just an editing mistake, honestly. I think that was just an editing mistake, honestly. I, I agree. Oh, no, that's that's what I was remembering. That's where he gets That's what I was remembering. So it wasn't the woman, it was the bloke. Right. It's it's funny and everything, but everyone's getting murdered around. Can we have a bit more haste, please, gentlemen? Come on! Also, they, also, I'd like to point out they cut the music for that section, which killed all the pacing. Yeah, absolutely. Keep the music going through scenes. Yeah, you just keep it quiet. You just put it, make it quite, slightly quieter when you want to hear people talk. Like this. That works. Because it's slightly quieter, but you can hear it. And here comes just a giant thing that's running at them. It is giant murder moles. Did... Can, can we believe that the final part of this movie where all the monsters turn up is literally half an hour? It felt like an age in the cinema. Yeah. It felt like an absolute age the first, in the cinema. The, what is the second act of this film? Does it have one? Well, I do remember this. That head is a practical effect. And the tongue, yeah, just goes in his mouth. There we go. That was their perfect shot. They actually had to cut the scene early. Why did that scene like? Because he started laughing. Well, because it was a good shot. Yeah, because yeah, they ended up in his mouth. <sighs> yeah, it's been an hour. So now we establish there are giant fucking moles, right? Yeah. Now at this point, I'm losing faith. At this point, I don't... <laughs> You're losing faith. I haven't lost it. I've lost faith at this point. I lost faith at the moment it was an hour and a, an hour and 15 minutes before anything happened. Mm. 
No, no, no. I, I don't, I'd lost faith in the film. I hadn't lost faith in the fact that it could still be fucking wizards. Yes, because at this point we at this. I'll restart that because I was because for some reason <laughs> my <laughs> zombie you has got the, you know the, the weapon at this which you might find in the British Isles. At, at this point, we could have had necromancers. Like zombie wizards, wizards, zombies, demons, anything of that, but none of it happens. What in fact? Wait, look at that line. It's funny. Think an hour ago, I was thinking of top of myself. All of this has happened in one hour, allegedly. And there's Margot Robbie. That picture costs more than Simon <laughs> Pegg's higher <laughs> uh, payment for this movie. Yeah, they had to buy the yeah, they had to buy the top and everything. She was like, I'm not just going to wear any top. You can't just give me a Primark top. This is definitely where you need to hire her as the next, like, Bond, like, lady and just call her Ivana Spankoff, completely unironically. Isn't that a name? Isn't that from... Um, what is that from? That's from Austin Powers. I don't think that's Austin Powers. No, Ivana Spankoff, I'm pretty sure, is Austin Ivana Powers. Ivana Spankoff. I'm what? pretty sure. Oh, now, now I need to remember, because that is from something now that I think about it. I can't remember what it I'm is I'm convinced from. that's from Austin Powers. Okay, this is funny. See, I like this because it's That's him going, because it's him like going into teacher mode, tweaking a little bit. Yeah, it's him going into teacher mode, which I do think is the like. Okay, here, here is the thing. Here, here is the point that I think is the most major disappointment for me and you, which is we went into this film as two teachers expecting teacher jokes, expecting jokes about you know the school. Teachers no, look at the like, like because I, mean, I was thinking about ripping yarns the other day, wasn't I? Which is not yes. Michael Palin one about um, escaping from a boarding school. And there's a great joke. It's like I tried to escape and I made it thirty miles before I was caught by the school's leopard. Like no, that's actually, a joke. That's yeah, a funny that's joke. A good, yeah, but this is the thing. We were expecting so many jokes about teachers and students, and none of it happened. Because what in fact happened here? They just happened to set it in a school. And then, as a result, you have a power dynamic. That's all they've got. You've just got a power dynamic between teachers and students, which breaks down immediately here, with, with the exception of just one occasional joke of enunciate, boy, which I wanted more of. I would absolutely well, have paid for more of this film if it had done more jokes like that. If it had done more jokes based along the lines of just like, I'm going to destroy all these effing monsters. Language, Molten. The, the thing, because well, again, that would have been funny. I think this is ultimately all related to the fact that this film still doesn't know whether it's a comedy or if it's an action movie, or a horror, or a drama, or anything. And that, so now we're in comedy mode. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, see, that's that's not right, Joe. Yeah. The fact that we're pointing out the occasional bit, which is like, oh, that's not too bad. Well, that's the point, isn't it? We are just occasionally going... Yesterday we saw Frankie Boyle. I nearly pissed myself laughing. Oh, no, absolutely. Well, that's that's good comedy. There's a difference, isn't it? There's a difference between good no comedy and, like, mediocre Me and, comedy. And a thing which makes you laugh once every hour. And that's the thing. Frankie Boyle made jokes during that thing. That weren't even scripted jokes. They weren't even jokes that he had time to think about. He just said off the top of his head. I think all we're establishing in this yeah. is that no one with talent was involved, apart from maybe the practical effects guy, the guy who's currently going mental. Yep, yeah, that's fine. No, I don't know. I don't know. Brian Butterfield. No, he's gotten too inconsistent because he forgets that he's. Well, to be fair, maybe that's due to poor direction. Hmm. To be fair, a lot of bad direct, a lot of bad stuff is down to bad direction at times. Peter, I like how he's now just going mental, which is nice. Yeah, he is just a mental human being for no apparent reason at this point. Like he, he's. Almost... I'd like to point out that he is taking off his trousers in front of me and giving me an expectant look. I'm sorry. It's because I spilled, I spilled stuff down them, so I'm having to change my trousers. I'm gonna pop these in over here. I'm gonna let them dry. Yeah, it's nice about the fact that Cleggy is literally just, you know. Like, he's going mental, he's lost a lot of blood because he's been hit in the leg. And that's probably why he's going mental. And he wants his school to be, you know... Good. Upper class again. Because he doesn't like... He doesn't like northern people. Mm. That's why. I'd also like to point out that there is no music here. Oh, there isn't, is there? No. And a teacher's got shot. 
Disgraceful behaviour. By a te- by by a student. Just straight up by a student. Now again, disgraceful behaviour would have been a wonderful joke if this had been a comedy moment. Except for the fact that someone's going mental and shit bashing people for being gay. And northern. And not, northern. Not 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 together. Like like the, he's not bashing. He's not a gay northern. Yeah, no, he's not a gay northerner. He's just he's just one of them's gay and one of them is northern. Can I ask a question? Why does a school have live ammunition? I don't... See, to be fair, if that would have been... Again, again, if that had been foreshadowed as a joke, it would have been good. The I think... Chase, is, that li- is that live ammunition? Depends. Do you want to find out? You know, that would have been a joke. Or, 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 or just... Um, or just... My God. They all, they all have guns, to be fair. Uh, to be fair. At least it'll only be blanks. Blanks? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. I say, I don't want to be shot by a blank. Well, that's fine. You won't. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there you go. There's a joke. Set it up earlier. Many a good joke we could have made in this film, but the, the, I think the main point is many a j- good joke we could have made in this film. Yes. We 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 cut 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 cut. Also, I like the fact that it's text over before we lose the signal. Not let's call the police. Yeah, but Margaret Robbie's more effective than the police. Didn't you know that? There's an auto text joke there while someone's getting strangled to death. Didn't you know that Margot Robbie's more effective than the police? She does play Harley Quinn. Oh god, she did, didn't she? Yeah. Oh good lord. What's better, this or Suicide Squad? Oh, they just made it this is Sparta joke. I'm officially done. Oh. 2006, was that? We Are the Spartans? Oh. Not We Are the Spartans. Um, Meet 300. The 300. Uh, 300. 2000. And... You feel... shot me. Despite the fact that he shot someone else. He's got a sidearm, but he's had to stagger all the way to the window because... We wanted that... Well, sh- there you go, we wanted that shot. Why did we cut to the fucking flare and he's being torn to shit? Be- Goodbye, only good character. Because we couldn't... So I will, look at, I, will give, I will give the teacher credit. He goes for his student when the two arms get ripped off in a relatively okay practical effect. Right. And then just covered in blood. Off and screen then, killed. And then here comes the other one who rips off Simon Pegg's arm. So I think this is genuinely probably a metaphor for the entire film. Where Here's what I would have done to joke. Here's what I would have done. As he's getting murdered, if you want to keep it a comedic tone, it's like, Meredith, Meredith, I'm leaving you. Then have him get murdered. Yeah. And then to be fair, do you want to know what I would have had? Do you want to know what I would have done here? Go on. All right, okay. He's about to get murdered. He's about to get murdered. Then suddenly, children, get to the tunnels. Phone rings. No oh, Aubrey. Then he gets pulled out the window and killed. Yeah, there you go. That'll <laughs> yeah, work. Done. No, don't do that now. This is the thing. You do that when while he's still alive. It's funny. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I think. Uh, also, I'd like to point. Mr. Chips is alive. Yeah, Mr. Chips is alive. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to point. So who did you run over in the car? Uh, presumably the mole. I would also like to point out they're filming in low light here, not midnight, because it would have been too hard to get the natural lighting to work. You can tell, you can tell because there's look at their shadows. shadows. They hang on, that shadows low sunlight. Is that a moonlight shot? That's moon. No, because the moon is there, which means that the the camp, the shadows are in the wrong position. That is a. I think they've actually just dark adjusted that. They have oh, just dark adjusted that. Oh, oh dear, that's awful. You, you see, you see, most people. I'd also like to point out they didn't grab any guns. Most people would have no- wouldn't have noticed that, but we did. Mm. Sorry, Chad, or whatever your name is. Yeah, sorry, fucking guy who watches us. Fuck you. No, I was talking about the director. Oh, what Crispin? Yes, sir. Fuck's sake. Train with respect. He and I are tight. We're like that. That's me on top. Okay, yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Lewis is just placing one finger above the other. Yes. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's a tunnel to hell. At this point, I think we couldn't believe we were coming toward the end of the film because we had to be. I think at this point, like, okay, right. 20... We've like, got 15 minutes left. Yeah, but some of that is Nothing's credit. Nothing's happened. No, no, there's... Uh, the word. Right. I do like the fact that, like, apparently people oh knew about God. this, but no one cared. God. What, about the underground tunnels? Yeah. So, to summarise, kid arrives at boarding school. Mold. That's it. 
Moles. Oh no, hang on, no, no, that's supposed to be proper. There's fracking. Hmm. Lake goes on fire. Moles. Moles take down an attack helicopter. <laughs> I'm not even, a, not even an attack helicopter. It's just the Chinook. Kids go to visit. Yes. The, the crash site. Uh, don't care. Get Baps out. Only one of them. Head teacher gets killed as well as the caretaker. Go to orgy. Then let's ignore that because nothing really happens there either. Mm. Sick formers get killed. Guy gets killed. Teacher gets killed. Yep. Go to tunnels. No, absolutely. Oh, hilarious! Okay. I'll, I'll, I don't know. No, I'll... for the tone, it doesn't work. I know. This is not I a kind... comedic tone. I kind of like the joke. I'm going to die in virgin. Yeah, I'm would... going to die in Greek sandals. If it were a comedy, that would have worked. But it's not because they had tense music. They're being surrounded. They, this film does not understand the difference. Right, this film doesn't get tone at all. It doesn't, would... it doesn't exist to this I film. would argue most, na- most modern films don't get tone. No. Do, not... you know, do you know the film I feel has the worst tone? possible <laughs> suicide squad avengers age of ultron yes where it sat down and went we're gonna do a film about a killer robot that wants to wipe out all of humanity but he's gonna be quippy the entire time all the marvel films for a while did that like fucking doctor strange saw the cinema i hate that film so much because literally every time something fucking like that was supposed to be tonally you know either like powerful impactful like happened you'd have cape shenanigans and people trying to run in a cape yeah. and it's like fuck this film well i think the problem was i think people like the quippiness of, yeah and they can go fucking die of, for it of things like and do you want to who will remember quippy man. films a hundred fucking years no, no one. one absolutely fucking no one do you want fil- you want- okay what films from the last 20 years are going to be remembered do you think slaughterhouse rules yeah absolutely <laughs> I would think Mad Max Fury Road is potentially going to be remembered. Yeah, Mad Max Fury Road, probably the early Avengers films. Boyhood like, is potentially going to be remembered because it was like, you know. Never a, saw Boyhood, actually. Boyhood's a really big film. I, I assume that's probably going to be remembered a lot down the line. I think the problem is a lot of these films aren't going to be Blade remembered. Runner, the quippiest film of them all. Oh, yeah, Blade Runner's got so many quits. I mean, oh, for fuck's sake, keep the camera angle consistent if you're going to go for a horror reveal. Stupid fuckers. So, so. Oh, it's like chess! So, so, so Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are on screen together once. Yep. For about 30 seconds. <laughs> so you've got the, arguably, like, the most famous comedic duo in British comedy at the moment, and they don't use them together. What's the point? What's the point? Like, like if you're going to get one, you get the other. Oh my god, did you hear that? No, I missed that. Oh, I'm a pre. Oh, hand it over. I'm a pre fight funny joke. Oh, my house. God. Fair enough. Fuck that noise. Fair play, rather. What? But why is it not attacking them? For comedy. It's because the plot requires it not to attack them. Yes, for comedy. And then he just pets it. It's like, oh, it's fine, and it murders him. I feel sorry for people who are watching this for the first time of us talking to them. And again, this is a horror shot. Yes. And then it moves. There we go. See, Allegedly a horror shot. See, I would have just had him die now. No, because he, he used to die with the thing off camera because they couldn't be no, bothered no, no, to no. get a decent shot. No, I need to have him be pulled back with no legs. Who gives a fuck yeah, here's, about here's, this, this side is, plot? Here you go, here's the side plot. Here's the only resolution to any of the side plots we get in the entire film. He sees his little brother and just <sighs> and goes to him. What do you mean? We, we got the resolution to the side plot that the kid hanged himself in serious circumstances because he was a fake out. Yeah. <laughs> a, f- a fake so, out. Sorry, sorry, is it bad that when you said that I immediately assumed uh, a, an ethereal goat? A fey goat. Oh, a fey goat. <laughs> 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 okay, that's quite a, a good one. A goat with that's like an ethereal on. This is my word. It's the Fey goat. New, new, new magic card. Homosexual creature, legendary creature, Fey goat. <laughs> <laughs> Some, you know, TV quality running sequence there. They're reusing the same tunnel over and over again, aren't they? So they only built one set. Yes. At what point did you realise? Roundabout. 
I remember realizing this in the cinema. At what point did you realize they were reusing the tunnels? What day is it? Oh, it's Tuesday. Uh, about five weeks ago. Yeah, I was going to say months ago. They climb through the tunnel, which just happens to be there. I, li- I like the idea. Like, this is the same problem I had with you know um, the Dan Matchy. Um, is it is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Oh no, there's a bunch of people that are coming for us and getting murdered. Better go deeper. Look. I remember at this point, I was like, we were both, to be fair, like, it's just moles. It is just moles? They're actually just moles. What do they eat? Sorry? What do they eat? Um, They've been underground. Come, right? they're fake outs. <laughs> they've been underground, right, for the entire time, and they've been jumping out, and when they've jumped out, that's when they've been, you know... You know, doing their stuff. Fracking gas. But but what have they been eating up until then, and why are they not all dead yet? Because they've seem, they've seemingly got like a large hive, so surely there's enough food to sustain all of them. To get to quite large sizes as well. Because most um, moles just eat like insects and stuff. But that's why they're so small. Oh, who gives a fuck? They're eating fracking gases. Well, I laugh at the fact that they literally all abandon him, right? Run to the end. And one of them turns back and goes, nah, I can't leave him. Oh, fuck it. Why couldn't they have just all Why were they all way? really happy to let him no, go? No, no, I'm, I'm oh, a, they kissed! No, Look no, at them, they no, kissed! No, no, question. He runs off to stop them running after them. But it's been established these things are very fast. It's couldn't nice. he have just turned and run with them? But, mate, they kiss, so it's fine. Oh, it's a snuff box that he gives them. <laughs> Again! That's a Scooby Doo noise. That's the second Scooby Doo noise I've made. Ruh! Ruh! They all just come at them at this point, don't they? All of them just come. Ah! Uh, Sorry, that was too loud. That was too fair. But on the plus side, the louder you are, the less I have to hear this moving. True enough. So I feel I'm English. Anyway, sorry, where were we? Oh, yes, what else was set up? The last teacher died, except he didn't. Mr. Chips is immortal, except he's not. Uh, witchcraft created a hole underneath the earth, except it didn't. The, um... Is it really only half an hour? What? Well, from Act 2 to Act Act, act 3 in total. Is it? It's it's half an hour... All right, right, right. Three-act structure, okay. Three-act structure. Act 1, set up. Act 2, some vague action scenes. And then, you know, the setting up slash lowest point of our characters... Act 3, final conclusion. Yep. Act 3 is half an hour. It's a third of the film. That is not the ratio you want. It's supposed to be... No. It's, it's 25, 50, 25, usually. Yeah, but at the same time, like... I would argue this film doesn't have a Act 2. Oh, God, that's bad. No, it doesn't. It just has set up and done. It's got an Act 1 that is 75% of the movie. Yeah. Which is, which is 66% of the movie and an Act 3. Oh, God, my back hurts so much, mate. I tell you. <laughs> If I was engrossed, I'd be leaning forward. I'm kind of trying to tunnel it. Yeah, fuck the fracking man. Kill them all. Here's the thing, though. Fracking saves the day as well, because fracking... Yeah! Alright, to be fair, that that, that, that was alright. That's a good shot. Well done, Chris, but you made a good shot. It took you an hour and a half of my time. Right. Do you think we should phone Chrisman and get him to make an Area 11 music video? Don't don't name drop them here. <laughs> <laughs> not not here. Not here. Not with this. Oh, they're gay now. No, that's like a. No, that the new head boy no, or something. No, no, mate, they're they're their hands touch. They didn't say no homo, and he's a homosexual character, so he'd have a gay panic joke quickly. Oh, just to make it you know better. Yeah. End of the game. End of the film. My mom end. is going to fucking kill me. No, that was the end of the film. Let's go. You don't do the music of the let's go. You go. No, oh no. Oh no, God, the jogging. It's so bad. Oh yeah. Mary by by the way, by the way, yeah. Oh yeah, this is where they have the chummy shot. Where they go, they, wait, do they cut to reverse angle? I can't remember. Well, thank God that we survived and all the people died. Yeah, that's right. Simon Pegg survived for no apparent reason. He's missing an arm. Why? He survived. I'm alive. I'm alive. Children. Children, I'm alive. Where are you? God, this is trash. 
Okay. There's the reverse no, shot. No, there no, it no. is. I know. Straight up. That why are we showing the shot? The film. Why don't we? Why do we show a shot? Why don't we stop at that last Simon Pegg line? No, children, yeah. where are you? I think they realised that we were horrible point to stop it on, but they should have just stopped it, as you say, on the initial shot before the reverse shot. Oh, thank. Oh, let's go. God for that. Oh, it's finished. And now we just get. Thank. Oh. So, Crispin Mills. So it was written by two people. Only two. So I'll give them that. They didn't. They didn't do what some Hollywood films and like get a hundred people oh to. Oh my god. Oh, they they produced it. They they yeah. This is the first from their production company. Is it their production company? Yeah, it's their production. Their first and last. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I believe the other film that Crispy made was with Simon Pegg as well. Pretty, like no one's ever heard of it. Well, they've got giant mouths. Which is indicative of its quality. Yeah, that's, that's a butterfield. butterfield. There he, he is. He gets top billing. He does get top billing. He does deserve it. My, my apologies for making a false claim earlier. Hermione. Michael Sheen. Oh, God. Michael Sheen was so bad in this. Nick, with Nick Frost and... Wait. S did, does no one else get billing? And Simone Park. Oh, my God. The others don't even get billing. No. Oh, what, oh, that's a snub. What about the Asian girl? Don't get billing. Wow. Fuck. They don't get Billy. Why would they? Why would they indeed? Why would they get Billy? It's not like they were. It's not like they were in the film. It's not like they were as they much. Were, it's as much of a main character as, as most of the other ones. Oh my god! In alphabetical order. Wow. Okay. Just by the fact they start with Yuri. No, 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 al no. Alphabetical order by the actor's surname. Ah. Weirdly. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. <sighs> Fucking hell. Right. So. Well then, Pablo. Castillas, the stunt rigger. Well done, you. Yeah, you did all right. And Tim Dennison, you were the line manager. I do like the right. Hang on, wait. Let's uh, let, let, let's stop narrating the credits because we can just. So what went wrong? What went wrong is that this film could not keep a tone worth shit, and it did not know how to foreshadow. Yeah, no. Well, I'd argue it did know how to foreshadow. It did. Oh no! For no, 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 just no. Forgot. It does know how to foreshadow. It doesn't know how to conclude a foreshadow. No, it's not to pay off. That's what I mean. It doesn't pay off. Yeah, because it, it sat down and it went, right, here's all the things that this film is going to do, and did none of them. I, I get the feeling this film wants to be two hours. It wants to be two hours, and it wants to have a lot of setup and a lot of payoff, and then it yes. didn't have the budget, nor the ambition to be able to do it. I think we walked off at this point, because we didn't realise Oh, we that... were gone at this point, yeah, Michael so I don't think... Sheen's talking. Yeah, I don't think we... Michael Sheen is talking. Is it Michael Sheen? I think it's Michael Sheen. Check, check the box. <laughs> <laughs> Have we been calling him Martin Sheen? These I days? thought it was Martin Sheen. Oh my god, it's Michael Sheen. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> who's Martin Sheen then? I don't know, I've definitely heard the name. Fuck okay, it. we apologise to Michael Sheen, who's all, all obviously also the listening Creature to Creature SFX is done by an out studio, which makes sense as to why they look so good, because they couldn't fuck it up. Pretty much, they won. You know, they made them and they came back. Armourers. There were two armourers. Why are there armourers? I don't know. I'm assuming for a, a, sh a, a scene that was never like shown. Yeah. Oh Additional shooting crew, just these random people. I'm sure they'll find Tony Hood. See, the people I feel sorry... So, see, yes, that's the problem with the film. I think it's the problem with the director and the screenplay here. Yes. The, the acting was okay, given that it was a lot of people's first time, which I, is I, fine. I get the, the problem I have with a lot of the acting in this is it cl they clearly weren't given a very good amount of direction or a very good script. As a result, no, not they, at all. As a result, they couldn't act worth toffee. Because I remember when I was at the Comic Con thing, one of the things she said was that Chris Bid said they, 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 he had the Scooby position, which is where they would all be kind of like, you know, wrapped around the side of a corridor, like in Scooby Doo with their heads poking out. And it's like, you're a comedy director, don't do this. <laughs> like, no, absolutely. I do... Well, the problem is he's a comedy director, but he's not a comedy writer. But um, tis. I'd argue that he's just, and um, bless his heart, probably just not a very good director right now. I think, again, ideas man, but not someone who can present yeah. those ideas very well on film. Because here's what I would have done. Because I would have done, obviously, first you three acts. I thought you said Office Man, I'm an abuse king for a second there. No, I no, <laughs> didn't. What you do is you have the first half an hour be set up and the occasional little thing. And then at the half an hour mark, everything yeah. hits the fan. Yeah, they're... they're... Cause... Everything doesn't hit the fan an hour and ten. Everything hits the fan at half an hour. I know you could have done a lot less setup and probably gone for maybe like you know, twenty f twenty minutes of setup. Maybe if you really like, well, it depends. Yeah. Cause you, you have, the, the the thing you have to first answer is: Is this going to be a horror film or a comedy film? It's a horror film. You need more setup. You need a thirty-five minute act one. 
maybe 25 minute act two, half an hour act three, right? And that's fine. Yeah, that's if you're going fine. for a comedy film, you need 15 minutes of setup, a lot of act two, and then a no. little bit of act three. Now, now, Lewis, the, the credits are approaching the end, so it's a bit... Is there a post sequence? I don't believe there is a post sequence. No, we've got. We have got, we've looking got at this, we've seconds. got 30 seconds, so I think at this point it's enough to start wrapping us up and say that this is a work of fiction, <laughs> if you hadn't already noticed. Hugh and I are both acts of fiction. We are indeed acts of fiction. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this, viewers, I really did. Um, I don't know what possessed us to do this other than it would be a good idea and it would be funny, and I think we've just ended up being exasperated. Hopefully you're exasperated alongside no, us. No, I think, I think we sat down and went, we might as well do this, because why not? And I think that's the point. And isn't that the point of life viewers? Indeed. Thank you, and good night. Fuck this film. <laughs>